Thanks, Tom. Tonight we're learning new details about the inmate who tested positive for COVID-19 at the Marathon County Jail and what jail officials are doing to help stop the spread in close quarters. News 9's Victoria Saha has been looking into this for us and she joins us live from the jail. Phil, this is the first case of COVID-19 here at Marathon County Jail. Although jail officials tell me they took precautionary measures for months, now that they have a positive case, they're working to make sure the virus doesn't spread. Wearing masks and keeping your distance from others can be hard when you're inside a jail block and have no choice but to share your space with about a dozen other people. Back in May, News 9 reported the jail was monitoring every new booking that came through with temperature checks and questionnaires. The individual has been with us for about nine, nine days and through uh, routine inspections, routine contact, uh, we identified the individual as, as being asymptomatic for the COVID virus. The jail has also stopped any visitors from coming in and currently is in lockdown from outside individuals. You can try to, even the hospital centers, you can try to do as much as they possibly can to curb it and an outbreak could still take place. Uh, it's just on how quickly you respond to it and what you do to correct or stop it that makes the difference. The inmate who tested positive was sharing a cell block with more than 20 other inmates. Sheriff Park says everyone in that block has been separated from the rest of the inmates until they deem it is safe. And they are using their UVC light to disinfect the area thoroughly. But we have our own medical individuals that are assigned to the county jail. We work hand in hand with the health department and we have the UV system already purchased and paid for. So there isn't really much more of an expense. As for staff who handled the inmate, they're also monitoring their symptoms. Now, Sheriff Parks did tell me, although they did let out a quite a few individuals on Huber or on ankle monitors a few months ago, those who are inside the jail will remain behind lockup. In Marathon County, Victoria Saha, News 9, WAOW. Thank you, Victoria. Well, Marathon County has seen its largest increase in COVID-19 cases since the pandemic began, with an additional 22 cases now topping 400. Portage County, an additional seven cases. Wapaka and Clark County, both with three more. Forest County up one, and Lincoln County has six more, including someone under the age of 10. Statewide, there have been nearly 45,000 cases. 865 people have died. 77% of the patients have recovered. Well, Tony, we had a lot of cloud cover today, and it was a little, I won't say chilly, but it was cooler. It was definitely cool for this time <laughs> of the year, no doubt, but at least a few spots had some occasional sunshine. Let's check it out here with the uh, time lapse from our weather camera up in Rhinelander. And you'll notice that was uh, pretty gray for a while, but then it got brighter in the afternoon and overall dry for much of the day, other than a few little uh, spots of drizzle and sprinkles. Right now in Wassa, 71 degrees, the dew point 59, and we have humidity of 66%. Wind out of the west-northwest, 12 miles per hour. Around the area, readings vary from 71 in Wassa to 70 in Wisconsin Rapids. A lot of 60s, though, 65 in Marshfield and Medford, 66 in Crandon, and 67 in Marshfield. Still that bank of clouds sitting right on top of us for the most part, with the exception of a few breaks in it, and a few sprinkles being noted up here in the northeastern quadrant around Langlade, Oneida, Forest, and Menominee counties. Tonight, some patchy clearing. Temperatures cooling back to the mid-50s with some patchy fog possible. And wow, what a, what a sight this is. Some of those lilies from Teresa Poltrock of Anago. Find out when the next surge of heat and humidity arrives. I've got the updates coming up. Thank you, Tony. A punctured gas main causes a Wausau neighborhood to evacuate. The Wausau Fire Department says a construction crew accidentally hit the main at the intersection of Cedar Street and 8th Avenue. Homes in that area had to be evacuated. People were told not to start any engines or light any flames while that situation unfolded. Something as, as large as that, a four inch main, main is pumping out a significant amount of gas. So if there were to be any ignition source, any spark from any of the equipment, any passing vehicles, it could be a pretty catastrophic event. Wisconsin Public Service did check everything out and people were allowed to go back into their homes a little before noon today. Marshfield Police Chief Rick Gramza has been cleared of any wrongdoing following a decades old misconduct investigation. City Administrator Steve Barge says the allegations against Gramza were unfounded and that Chief Gramza was fully cooperative and voluntarily took leave during the investigation. 
That criminal investigation was handled by an outside agency and has been closed. The search is on to find the burglars who broke into a Spencer area home two weeks ago. Residents left their home for a doctor's appointment and upon return uh, found that their home had been broken into and several items taken. Missing items include numerous pieces of jewelry as well as checkbooks, $500 in cash and coins. If you do have any information on this break-in on 26th Road, you are asked to contact Marathon County Crime Stoppers. Essential Wisconsin Police Department is asking to keep an eye out for counterfeit money. This black and white scan shows an example of a fake $100 bill the Crandon Police Department is tracking. They appear to have Chinese characters printed on the left side of the back of the bill. And police say the paper feels 